So Modern Warfare 3's Season 3 has been fully revealed in detail, and while we covered a top level of what was coming on Wednesday with that reveal, that was again a nearly 15 minute video that we didn't really get to touch on everything. We recently just talked about the gameplay changes and the features upcoming that'll alter that gameplay experience to some degree. So today I wanted to cover a different area of Modern Warfare 3, that being the new weapons, giving those specific details and all things coming along with the weaponry of Season 3 for Modern Warfare 3. So as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. What do you think of the upcoming weaponry in Season Season three, you're looking forward to any weapon in particular. If you enjoy the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay with all things Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, and other FPS content here. I'd love to have you. Also, we're getting into posting more short form content. You might have noticed some of the shorts here on the channel, but if you'd like to follow over on TikTok as well, that'd be cool to see you over there. But anyways, let's jump into the weaponry of season three. So let's start out with the launch weaponry here for this. We have the FGX Horus, the Moors, and the Gladiator. The FGX Horus is a submachine gun that will be coming in the battle pass with 18 levels. It's a weapon that is formerly known as the MP9, making its return to Modern Warfare 3. Described as an ultra compact SMG with best in class CQC damage and mobility, its versatility is the name of the game with this SMG. It's a favorite of those who like to pack a punch on the run, and the weapon has an incredible rate of fire and class leading mobility and handling helps mitigate the recoil control. Now, the MP9 previously was famous for that fast fire rate, so looking forward to seeing this insane submachine gun probably make a run for that, I'd imagine, close quarters meta. I kind of feel like with tax sprint, the mobility will be much more felt than back whenever you actually had the MP9, that classic Modern Warfare 3 feel, since at that point you only had sprint and walk. So to now have a third tier of faster movement and the weapon weight playing a factor into the movement speed, along with other mobility increasing items like vests or boots, you might be able to zoom with this thing. So very curious to see how this will play out in regards to that close quarters and just like run and gun play style. I think it has a good potential, especially in MP, but also in Warzone. Now, the Moore's Sniper Rifle is another one that's going to be coming in the Battle Pass at launch. With 19 levels, it's the classic from Advanced Warfare returning, which is pretty cool. I know some people aren't fond of the idea of Advanced Warfare weapons returning, but I honestly love it. Maybe that's just me, but it's described as the single load railgun delivering a high damage payload with excellent velocity and penetration. An advanced form of Sniper Warfare, the military operates rail sniper, Moors, is a one-shot beast, offering high damage with exceptional handling. Distance is an afterthought with this long-range and accurate sniper rifle with what may be the perfect combination of accuracy and damage. The weapon has single round devastation with a reasonably rapid reload rate. So for those of you who did not play Advanced Warfare, this one's going to act in the same way with its signature characteristics of that sniper. It's a one-shot sniper at just about any distance, but you have to reload every single shot. So in Advanced Warfare, it was relatively quick with that reload. It said in that description that it should be the same. So I'm kind of thinking it's not necessarily going to be anything too bothersome or anything to be worried about, but I'm curious to see how this will carry over in potential to Warzone. I feel like that one shot potential would have to do that, but with variability in headshot drop off distances and those weapons in the sniper category that are and are not one shot, I'm curious to see where this will fit in. One interesting mention about this weapon in particular and seemingly out of the weaponry, this weapon only is that it's not going to be be in Warzone Mobile at launch. That whole thing with Warzone Mobile was it was supposed to be one to one parity. What you had on console, on PC, you had on mobile as well, but it's not going to be there on mobile at launch. It's the only one that's mentioned as such, but it has this asterisk next to it denoting that the Moors, its blueprints, and other certain content will not be available at the start of the season. So it'll come in time, but just not at launch. An interesting little caveat there. Then finally, you have the Gladiator melee weapon in the Battle Pass, which is six levels, but it's simply a melee weapon weapon, described as a compact concealable punch knife that was initially used by gamblers and politicians. Close quarters combat was never so quick and painful, with a gladiator rivaling the Karambit for supreme mobility, handling, and damage potential. Cut straight to the bone with haste and ease, but ensure you're close enough to make your lethal stabs count. Not much more to this one, it's a melee weapon, no special abilities like the Soul Render of last season, but a melee to fill out the battle pass no less. Now that said, talking Battle Pass, it's already been detailed in the Battle Pass and previewed with what we know and where it's going to be. The FGX Horse is going to be in Battle Pass Sector 8, the Moors is going to be in Battle Pass Sector 4, and the Gladiator is going to be in Sector 15. The Moors is about 15 tokens away from the very start, the FGX Horse is about 20 from the start, and if you decide to go for both, it'll take 30 tokens if you decide to go for them outright and not deviate in path at all. The Gladiator is a bit further away, the fastest path looks like 35 tiers away, but that's assuming you don't pick up the FGX Horus and deviate in path. You just go straight to it. 
Now, not to advocate for it, but rather just to inform you of all scenarios, Black Sail's starting point is up on the other side of the Battle Pass map, where if you get that, it looks like you can get the blueprints for the Moors and the FJX Horus, functionally unlocking it simultaneously for just 10 tokens of your 20 tokens that come with a Black Sail Pass. So you'd get those immediately, and you'd have enough tokens to get the Gladiator as well, using all 20 of those. So again, I don't care if you get it or don't, I'm not here to advocate for or against it, but that's just all the outcomes for how you get the weapons in the battle pass. Just wanted to put it all out there for full transparency. But those are the weapons coming at launch. In season, we do have another weapon of the Ball 27, an assault rifle that's listed as Redacted. It has 19 levels and is another classic return. I'm bummed this one isn't coming until mid-season, but it is what it is. Detailed as Redacted, at this point, we kind of know that it's going to be the Redacted segment of the Battle Pass. The last four to five seasons now in COD have done that, so it's seemingly going to be the new release trend when it comes to mid-season weaponry, meaning you'll end up seeing a new sector open up in mid-season where you have to complete five tier-based challenges and then you just unlock the challenge challenge for the ball unlock. But the ball 27 is described as a bullpup prototype weapon designed to increase fire rate over time while the trigger is squeezed. The first four shots are slower to fire, but highly accurate. Top loading with a reasonable rapid ammo swap, the fast firing future proof assault rifle shreds at close ranges, has a moderate kick that drifts upward, offers great default reticles, and comes with a 60 round mag once you've leveled it up, doubling the ammo available between reloads. So I'm just honestly so stoked to play with this one here again. And with a 60 rounder, it should be solid choice for any play engagements. Obviously, it's going to be good in MP. Basically, every gun can be competitive in MP. But with rifles working how they are in Modern Warfare 3's Warzone meta, and this one being a bit faster firing as you hold that trigger down, being geared a bit more towards closer quarters than longer range as far as rifle play goes, I could see this being a solid sniper support weapon, in which case, maybe that Season 3 meta turns into the Ball 27 and Moors. What a throwback that would be. But I also kind of hope that we see some classic reskins as blueprints, like an Obsidian Steed blueprint would kind of go really hard, if I'm honest with you. Obviously, not the stat-altering benefits, but just like in terms of design, I think that'd be cool. I also think that that Atlas variant that was in Advanced Warfare, I think that'd be really cool looking in design. But a lot of potential. Anyways, that's the weapons we know of coming in season as the functional standalone weapons, but we also have more aftermarket parts coming. Modern Warfare 3 has really been hitting hard with these aftermarket parts that, while they're not entirely new weapons, they, functionally speaking, alter the guns in a tremendous way sometimes. Season 3 looks to keep that ball rolling and introduce us to an already mentioned eight aftermarket parts in Season 3, seven of which are coming as weekly challenge rewards, some of them, I think, being of big interest as well. So we have the Jack Cutthroat, which is a weekly challenge challenge unlock compatible with the MCW, MTZ, M4 from Modern Warfare 2, AMR9, and the submachine gun and platforms. This is a 3D printed stock that provides an unrivaled combination of speed and stability while aiming down sights. The Jack Revenger kit is a weekly challenge compatible with the BP-50, and it's a conversion kit that turns the BP-50 into a CQC legend using 9mm caliber conversions with a shortened receiver and high capacity magazine. So giving you, I think this one leaked, it was a 60 round mag or something like that, but it's of 9mm instead. So doing less damage per shot, but offering more ammo and focusing more so for close quarters engagements. The Jack Jawbreaker is a weekly challenge unlock for the KV Broadside, where it converts the shotgun into a hard-hitting automatic battle rifle. So. That'll be interesting. The Jack Shadow Titan Kit is a weekly challenge for the Bruin Mark 9, which converts the Bruin into a compact, suppressed light machine gun chambered in 300 blackout. The Jack Patriot is a weekly challenge unlock for the M16 from Modern Warfare 2, which converts the M16 into a fully automatic rifle with a heavy ported barrel built to provide superior recoil control and firing aiming stability. This essentially makes the M16 A1 automatic variant, essentially, so maybe it's actually worth using the M16 just a year later than intended. The Ward is going to be a weekly challenge unlock for the Lockwood Mark II. And this is going to relive some glory days for people, or maybe just be some bad flashbacks you don't want to relive, where it's said to stir up the hornet's nest, take down your enemies, leaving no loose ends with these museum worthy akimbo lever action shotguns. Yeah. The Akimbo 1887s are back with this aftermarket part, so that'll be fun. And then the final weekly challenge unlock we'll have is the Jack Atlas kit, which is for the AMR9, which converts the AMR9 into an extremely lethal and accurate five round burst carbine chambered in 556. For those who remember, this is going to turn the AMR9 into functionally 
the Amor 9 from Advanced Warfare, which is another cool throwback. So that's something you may have caught, maybe you didn't. But anyways, the final aftermarket part that we have is the Photonic Charge Barrel, which is a redacted unlock, meaning that it's probably going to be in that redacted Battle Pass sector along with the Ball 27, but it's compatible with the Moors, and it's a hyper-advanced barrel that's more than simply a barrel. Holding the trigger charges the rifle and releasing fires a single high-powered energy projectile. So Tempest from Black Ops 3's back, baby. We're getting a lot of throwbacks and weird crossover with this one, but that is going to round out the aftermarket parts that we know of as well. So kind of like 12 weapons here in Modern Warfare 3 Season 3, but again, realistically, four actual new weapons, just alterations to others. Now, of course, as with every season, these new weapons bring along with it new camo implications, meaning that you have, by the end of the season, four new weapons that you can swap in and out for your Interstellar or Borealis grind here, if you guys are still going for that, where you can sacrifice those smaller categories of, like, melees or launchers or something like that if you don't want to do them in place of, like, another rifle, another sniper or something like that. So just bear in mind, you'll have to complete entire categories of weapons, but if you have a certain amount over in each, you'll be able to count those towards your Interstellar or Borealis grinds. And also, if you're a camo fan, we are going to see additional weapon camos introduced with each weapon. Four per weapon, one for the melee. So you'll see a handful throughout the season. But that said, that is the brand new weapons coming through Modern Warfare 3 Season 3, and that is where we're going to call it. Now, before we wrap everything up, I want to let you guys know about my friends over at Gamer Advantage, for who I firmly believe are the best bullet glasses on the market. I've worked with these guys now for nearly three years and cannot recommend them enough. They're the most lightweight, comfortable, and durable frames out there and I definitely think they've helped my daily productivity. Full transparency, they are a bit of an investment, yes, but I do think your vision is worth investing into, especially if you're like me, you look at a monitor, your phone, or your gaming for a good chunk of the day. If you guys would like to learn more, at the very least, I'd recommend just checking out their website where they can better break down the science, all the specifics of their product way better than I could, but what I can personally say is that I'd highly recommend them. So if you guys want to learn more, check the link in the description below, and if you'd like to pick something up for yourself, use code ESPRESSO for 10% off your entire order. But for now, that is what we're going to call it, so let me know your thoughts down below on these weapons, anything in particular you're looking forward to whether it be any of the new actual weapons or any of the aftermarket parts let me know but if you enjoyed the video you found it at all insightful do me a favor and drop a like on it and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe so miss a single thing running all things modern warfare 3 season 3 and other fps content here on the channel i'd love to have you but for now thanks so much for watching my name is espresso i'll see you later take care and peace